Hi, I'm Cheryl, and today we're going to be making some all-occasion cards. Yes, cards. We're going to do three different ones that are, they're different but the same. And we'll be, I'll be able to put those aside and put them in my card stash so that when I have an occasion for a card, all I need to do is add sentiments to them, and away I go. So it's centered around to a Wild Rose stamp set. I've also used the um, Heartfelt Creations, the intricate, intricate swirl frames. And we're using the large one right here, which will fit on nicely on a 5x7 card. The card bases are the Thick Whisper White. And those, so since we're doing a 5 by 7 card, they're 7 by 10 inches and then scored at 5 inches. So I've done a lot of prep work on these already. And I've stamped my pink colored ones and cut out all the pieces for my pink colored one. And I stamped and cut out all the ones for my orangey kind of colored one right there. And we're going to work on the lavender colored flower. I'll show you um, how I went about stamping these. So I have all the pieces cut out for these already. So we have the the part that's um, die cut using the uh, the die from the from the intricate swirls dies. Then I have a piece of basic black, and that is let me give you the measurements on that. That is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I have another piece here that's the coordinating papers. I'll tell you where I got these papers from too. And that's four by six. Did I say that was five and a quarter? It's, I don't know. It's six and a quarter by four and a quarter, the black piece. And then this piece here is four by six. And that will get matted on with the black. Just a tiny little border of black around it. Um, the, the lavender colors came from the Heartfelt Creations. This, these are, They're all Heartfelt Creations pattern papers. Some of the older ones that I have. And to go with my New Year's resolution to use what I have. And I tend to not want to use my, my papers. So... That's what I used. I used my pattern papers. So that this is from Classic Petunias. This one, these papers were from from um, Blazing Poppies. And the pink color pathway was from birds birds in bloom or birds in blooms birds in blooms that's a retired paper but the main thing i want to impress on you is that in when you collect uh pattern paper packs they're usually coordinating through the packet and um it's uh, no different for the heartfelt creations so if you don't have Heartfelt Creations pattern papers, you don't need to run out and buy some. Look at the pattern papers you already have and see if you can come up with, with a color pathway, like this is the pinks. And we had the oranges and we had, we're going to do the lavenders. So check and see what you have. Okay. Because that's a multi-stage stamp, I am definitely going to use my Stamparatus. And I have um, all of my stamps already laid out so that they're, um, that they're correct on my various 
pages of my Stamparatus. Um, the Stamparatus comes with two, but I got two extra ones. So I have a total of four of these. And if I wanted to, I could sit and just snap, 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 whip out a dozen of these cards if I wanted to. But I figured three in different colors would be sufficient to have in my stash. And they could be used for so many things. Anniversaries, birthdays, congratulations, thank yous. And then I have, I have some bling here. I have some sequins, and I have some rhinestones. I have little rhinestone flowers. Um, I thought maybe with my pink one, I'd use some of the Nouveau Drops, maybe. So whatever, whatever bits of bling you have to add to the card, then use that. This is a Let's Use It Up day. So let's see, this color is, I should put my glasses on, and I could probably read this better. This is um, Sherbert Shimmer. Okay, so. Then I have all different inks. I have Crushed Curry. That's in a sponge dauber for that. This is for the flower centers. The Crushed Curry. And we'll be using, I've used that through all three. And then for the leaves, all of the leaves for all of the cards will be Mossy Meadow is our darkest, Old Olive is our mid-tone green, and then Pear Pizzazz is our lightest green. <clears throat> and for the one I'm doing today, I'm going to be using um, Blackberry Bliss, Gorgeous Grape, and Highland Heather. So, dark, mid-tone, Gorgeous Grape is the mid-tone, and then the Highland Heather will be our lightest one. Now, Stampin' Up! In, um, in the new annual catalog has um, an even lighter lavender color. It's something posy. And um, I don't have it yet. They wouldn't let me pre-order it, those dirty birds. So, then, these are the colors that I used for my, my, um, my orangey kind of toned, um, flower. And these are the, these are the hybrid inks from scrapbook.com, which I'm liking. So, this is, um, I used the light, lightest one was pink lemonade, mid-tone was Havana red, and then the darkest was cardinal red and for my pink ones it's, for some reason I don't know why Stampin' Up! just doesn't doesn't um, like to give us a lot of good pinks and I love pinks because I love flowers and so many flowers are pink so for my darkest one I used um, this is uh, from the Spectrum Noir and I use the, um, this is called Plum Jam. Oh, wait a minute. No, I did not use this one. For my dark one, I substitute it. Okay. Let me back up a little bit here. Spectrum, Spectrum Noir has come out with their own line of dye-based inks. These are all water-reactive dye-based, which most of the dye-based ones are. So... They come in a set of three, and they all coordinate. And let me show you the the um, paper thing that they come on. So we've got the three. We've got light, medium, and a, and the dark tones. And this is the front of it. Of course, I've torn everything off. But they're they're again they're quite nice. I love that they come in the three coordinating colors, so that when you have these multi-stage stamps, you can just grab the three, and you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about trying to coordinate colors yourself. But they are water-reactive, and um, when I tried these out first, I like to stamp, when I'm doing a multi-stage one, 
and I have trouble lining them up. I like to stamp the darkest, the outline um, stamp first. And I did that with the um, Spectrum Noir um, Plum Jam. But then when I stamped these other two on top of them, it kind of reactivated the outline and made it kind of fuzzy looking. So to keep it nice and crisp, I'm going to use the, um, the hybrid ink because when the hybrid inks dry, they're dry. They don't reactivate. Um, you can use these with alcohol markers, regular markers. Um, I'm thinking you can, well, I did do a watercolor card for Father's Day, but I'm thinking you could probably watercolor like totally over top of them and it would still hold up. I haven't, haven't quite tried that yet though. I'm just assuming that, but that's, that was my, that was why I'm using the, the hybrid ink for my, my outline of the flower. So, so this flower right here, this will be stamped. This one will be stamped in the, um, I don't know if you can see it very well, but this one will be stamped in the the hybrid inks. So I'm not sure how that's going to work with the Stampin' Up die-based inks, but we will see because that's what I'm using today. So let's do that, shall we? Let's stamp some leaves and some flowers. So you'll need some bits of of your of Whisper White cardstock. So I have this piece right here. And I'm going to show you a really cool little... Actually, I have two really cool little tricks with the... Um, I'm going to show you when I'm doing the leaves. So let's get... Let's do the leaves first. I have another piece of paper here that I've done leaves on already. And I'm going to have my foam in place on here. Back up there, ink pads, so everybody can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to put my piece of paper in here. And then I'm going to start with the outline of my leaves. <clears throat> put that in place and start with Mossy Meadow. So ink that up and then I'm going to stamp it. And now watch this. Okay, I got a good impression there. Look, I'll just take this out. I'm going to move it over two. So I'm going to skip a notch and move it over another notch. So if I were doing a dozen of these, I could just keep doing this. Just keep moving over and moving over. And I could have three of them on a piece of paper if I didn't have this cut out. And then I could flip it around and I could do it again and just keep going. So isn't that wonderful? I didn't even have to move my paper. So now I want to do the one. I'm going to do the lightest color next. And in the leaf set, there's one. There's two that look pretty solid. We're using the one that does not have a stem on it. So I'm going to ink that up with the pear pizzazz. That's for our light. We're using that for our light tone. And there we go. And I can lift that up, move it over to. I know I'm just so thrilled about this. One of the wonderful benefits that go with the um, the Stamparatus. I could do a whole border of leaves if I wanted to. If I if I wanted to overlap them, I could just do 
do this and just keep going like that and have them overlapped and a nice long border. I might have to try that. See how that looks. Okay, so now with the mid color, old olive, we're going to do the one that looks pretty solid and has the stem. So let me close up my pair of pizzazz, get that out of here. That's pretty just like that, isn't it? Well, we're going to add the old olive. And there we go. And move it over. Ink it up again. And stamp. There. Now we have our two sets of leaves we'll need for our lavender card. And it's time to do the flowers. Let's see. It says I have about eight minutes left of filming. So we'll see if I can get get my flower done in eight minutes. Maybe if I don't talk so much, that might help. You notice I only use one of the magnets. These magnets are so super strong that even with the with the padding in here, um, even with the padding, it they still cling very well. All right. So we'll ink up the outline of the flower with the Blackberry Bliss. Let's see what kind of an impression we get there. Oh, that's nice and deep. It's almost a black. It will dry a little bit lighter, but it's very, very pretty deep. Very pretty deep color. Then... I'll flip this around and go to my lightest color. That's my full um, coverage flower stamp. So Highland Heather. Next. Okay, there we go. Oh, so pretty. And then gorgeous grape. I'll need to switch this out. And ink that up with gorgeous grape. Now when you ink them, let me show you this close up. You see where some parts don't look like they're quite inked? That's okay because these are kind of a photo, like a photo quality kind of stamp. So they're not meant to stamp solid. But Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, how pretty is that? I don't think I'm going to put yellow in the center of this though. I don't think that's going to show up very nice on this. I'll just leave it with the dark center. Very pretty. Now there was something I wanted to show you. And I was going to demo it with the leaves. So let me get my leaves. My leaf stamps over here. Because I still have a few minutes left of recording. Okay. Alright. So I'm just going to do two of them. So I'm going to start out with um, my just my outline one and my mossy meadow. Sure, why not? And I'm just going to stamp it by hand with the with my stamp pad, and we'll just stamp it there. I don't care if there's a little smudge there because I'm just showing you a little trick. Okay, so now. 
Let me get that off. And I need, I'm going to do the, the one without the stem next. And so that will be a pair of pizzazz. And I'll ink that up and come in and I'm going to try to line this up. And this is what happens to me all the time. All right, for some reason, I always end up with my images offset like this. Okay, and with that white there. And that might, that if that's the look you're going for, that's great. But if you wanted the full coverage, that's, it just looks, it looks like I whoops, which I did. I purposely whooped to show you this, but like I said, that's, that's often what happens to me. Oh, I don't need to close that up. So, I'm going to take a sponge dauber, okay, and my pair of pizzazz ink, and I'm just going to add some color in there. And what that does is it makes it less noticeable that your, your color has not gone all the way to the edge here. It looks like it's almost supposed to have an extra color there rather than just a plain blank white color. So if you have that problem and you don't have a, um, a stamp positioner and you, you get off a little bit whenever you do this, as I do, you can, you can just kind of touch it up a little bit and no one will ever know. Okay, so I have to go. I have to cut my flower out and my leaves out. And then we can come back and start assembly lining our card, putting it all together. So I'll be right back with the my cutouts. Okay, so I have all of my cards all set to do our assembly line. But there was one more thing I wanted to show you because... Our inks and our papers are coming from different companies. They don't always match perfectly. Now this is pretty close, but to bring it, tie it in together even better, what I've done on the other two cards, and I'll do on this one also, is I'm going to take my Highland Heather ink and this makeup sponge. Link that up. Dab it out, get that all worked into my sponge a little bit. And I'm just going to go all around the edge here. Add a little bit of this Highland Heather color. To my pattern paper. And so now... now it's going to match the inks from Stampin' Up perfectly. And I could put a little bit in here too. Just clean my sponge out a little bit. There. Okay. And we have a nice little border on this card too. I went a little heavier on this one than the others. But either way, a little lightly or darker. Either one is fine. Let me wake my table up because we don't need to have Highland Heather somewhere we don't want it. Okay. So now we can we can do our assembly line. Okay, so I think I'll put the inside piece in first. And you can do that around this piece also if you want to. I skipped that step. Now, I'm going to use... Oh, look how pretty this is. Hmm, this side's awfully pretty too. How would that be? We would see this on the front, open it up and see this. I think I'll use this side instead. Well, that was a happy surprise, wasn't it? I'm going to use just repositionable tape. I'm just going to put a little bit at the top, a little bit at the bottom, and I'm going to put that inside my card here. And I'm not even going to bother to try to line it up real well because 
when it's time to give this card, I can just take this off because that's repositionable tape. Stamp my sentiment here, sign it, and off it goes. So the tape keeps, you could just tuck it inside the card, but the tape keeps it from getting lost until you're ready to use it. So the outside of the card, we'll put this piece down first. Let's do that with all of our cards. So I'll do my repositionable tape on this one and put that on the inside here. For my pink one, and I'll put. I'll do the same here for my my poppy one. My kind of orangey colors and just put that inside. Maybe I'll put it like this. No, the writing goes that way. It goes this way. It has. There's some very faint writing here, so I don't want to... I'll have the dark up in this corner here. Okay, so we've got all those done. So we have these. We'll all go on next. So I'm going to use my Tombow glue because I might want to move that around a little bit. And almost out of glue in this one. I keep saying that and there's just, there always seems to be just a little dab of glue left in there. So I'm going to put that on my front and line that up nicely and get that so there's a nice even border around it. I'm going to do the same on this one. You know, when they do, when you get two-sided papers, it's always so hard for me to choose which side of that paper I want to use. I have a hard enough time using my um, my pretty pattern papers. I like to just look at them and nine times out of ten I make my own background. But, okay, so we're gonna use we're gonna use this side. Uh, time to I think it's time to break out a fresh tombow. There we go. I'm just doing the solid cut part on this um, on this lacy part. There we go. If this sticks up a little bit from the paper edge, that's okay. It just gives our car a little texture. Okay, now we're ready to we'll put these two together. And again, I'm using Tombow. And this one, we have to center really well. Just that little bit of black showing all the way around. Okay. And we'll do the same with the poppy, poppy color ones. Flip that over. See, see what I'm saying? Look at that pretty paper on the back side too. And we'll line this one up. That's ready to go on there. And we'll do our pink one. Oh, the pink one's already done. I got a little carry away with this one. I even embossed, I did this blessed and embossed it with um, black embossing powder. So that one's already done. Now, if you wanted to right now on this step, you could put a little something behind it to pop it up a little bit. I'm just going to do it flat. I'm assuming I'll have to mail these in. So you don't want them too, too dimensional if you're sending it through the mail. So, like I said, I'm just going to glue these. I'm going to glue mine down. But if you want, you could put a little piece of um, cardboard from your cereal boxes. OK, 
Okay, and we're going to line that up on our lace. Oh, so pretty. I love when the cards come together. This is a great little stamp set. I really like it. I'm enjoying it. I have a couple other ideas for cards using it. To a wild rose. You know what happens if you um, if you do a search on YouTube to a wild rose? Now, obviously, there's a song um, to a wild rose too. I didn't know about that until until I did a search. I wanted to see what other people were doing with this stamp set. I'm always always watching videos and things to try and get ideas okay so look how pretty look how pretty these are all right so now we can put our roses down and again you could you could um, pop your roses up give them a little bit more dimension but I'm just gonna pop them down Put a little Tombow in the center here. Let's see, how do I want to put that? I think like right like that looks good. I'll move, I'm going to move this one a little bit towards the top. And we just put a little glue on our leaves. Come on, glue. And then we can tuck them underneath. And because I don't have it totally glued down, it, again, it gives it a little bit of a dimension there. Put this one, tuck that one up to the top. Just like that. And lots of our pretty designer paper shows through. And that's, that's pretty much the card. And if you want it to, then you come back and use I would use a stamp positioner for this if you want to you could stamp right on the pattern paper like I said use a stamp positioner that way if you don't get a good impression the first time you've got another chance at getting uh, you know a nice impression you can just re-ink and stamp again or you could make a little make a little a little tag or whatever or you could just leave it I mean this has has a lot of nice things right right on the front so I may not even need a tag on the front and then I stamp on my in take this out stamp on it and my cards ready will be ready to go so let's finish these up and then I'll have three nice cards I have tucked away Oh, I don't like that way that rose is facing. I want it that way. Okay, I can tuck this underneath here. And just kind of, I'll make that just kind of go around my sentiment that I have on there. That one will probably become a thank you card because I've been, I've already did this. And we'll take that and just stick that one up top here. Okay, so there's that one. And time for our lavenders. Pretty lavender color ones. And turn it on like that. I like lavender and green together. They're opposites on the on the color chart, so they they tend to pop each other out a little bit. And then we need to put some bling on it, right? I 
Okay, there. That's pretty. I'm going to start with the pink one because I'm going to do my my Nouveau drops. And I like to um, just off on the side. Oh, well, this is just scrap. I like to just give it a little squeeze and make sure it's not going to spit. And let's see. Well, I've got everything kind of going around down here. So let me put my dots more down this way. Uh, I need a third one. Where should I put it? Where should I put it? I think right there. And maybe I'll put another couple up here. Okay, so those will dry. They'll be nice and sparkly on there. And of course you can always add glitter if you want. There's so many things you can do to to add to these cards. Okay, so let me close that up. Um, I need to what when you're using your nouveau drops or anything with a little schnozzle like this, give it some good bumps. And that will get all the product down out of the little schnozzle here so it won't clog up. And I can if I you hold it near your ear, you can hear it kind of huff if you squeeze it lightly. Okay, so let's see. What should we put with this? Maybe some... No, you know what? I think I'll use some sequins on this one. So I'm just going to add some little dabs of glue. Here. Put one out here just to make it more random. Tuck another one there. And I've got my odd number, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. And my odd number. Always looks better with odd numbers. I'm not sure why that is. But it's like, I think it's some kind of a rule. So let me get some sequins out here. And I'll use my take your pick tool. And pick myself up some sequins and put them in place. There's one. Oop. Two. This is very helpful to have. Three. Four. And one more. Five. Oop, get on there. There we go. And once that glue dries, that'll dry perfectly clear. I used the the Art Glitter Designer Dries Clear Adhesive for that. Because Tombow will dry sticky. So I didn't want to use Tombow on there. But now I've got just a little glitter on this card. Huh. I almost set it right on top of my Nouveau Drops. And of course they're still wet. That wouldn't have been a good thing. Okay, now I have... I have some, um, like, flower things here. So let me get my pokey tool out. They have adhesive on them already. Pick one up. Let's see. Oh, look how pretty those are. Oop, that one got away. Let me put one up here. I think up there would be nice. And one more. These are made by that Darius company too. They have a lot of um, inexpensive craft supplies. That's who does the, the repositionable tape. Now I'm going to put just some little ones. Put just a couple little rhinestones on there, maybe. If I can, I can see them. I took my glasses off. Come on, little sequin, or little 
rhinestone. I'll put one over here. I need to put one up here somewhere too, I think. Well, that leaves that makes an odd number. Let me hold that up and see what I think. No, it needs something. It's a little something in here. I think I'll put one right there. Kind of breaking the um, the odd number rule, but let me put that there. Oh, and maybe one. I'll put one over here, and that will give me my odd number there. So I won't be breaking a rule. Let's see if I can get one off. They have they have a little thing in between them that kind of holds them together. I need to cut it. Come on, last little rhinestone. Don't you love watching me struggle with these things? I, do, I like to see people make mistakes and all. Then I don't feel so bad when I do. Okay, so there's that one. So we've got all three cards completed in like no time at all. So if there are any Stampin' Up! products that you'd like to purchase that I've shown today, then you can do that through my Facebook page or my blog. And I'll have that those uh, the URLs for those down there below. Um, that would be wonderful if you used me for your demonstrator. If um, you have any questions or comments, leave those down below too. Um, what else do I say at the end? Oh, if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button down there. It's kind of over that way. And then over this way is a subscribe button. So if you'd like to see more of my videos, Hit the subscribe button and then a little bell will come up. And if you hit that bell, it will even Facebook will even or not Facebook, YouTube will even tell you when I've posted a new video. Isn't that wonderful? So y'all take care, stay safe, and happy stampin'.